Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I am getting ready to leave the house because I have just four shipments today. Uh, it was kind of a slow weekend. I don't know if it was the holiday or we just didn't have enough activity on eBay to kind of push us up there. But I already packaged them up, so I can't really show you the items themselves. Uh, so the first thing here is going to be this Cabbage Patch Preemie doll. I'm going to turn around and show you the picture here. You can see this doll. This one here is a uh, brass vase. It is a vintage brass vase ornament here. Now this ornament I paid I think like maybe a quarter for at a yard sale and it sold. Welcome back guys. So packages have been dropped. I'm taking advantage of the fact that my son is actually taking a nap, which he hates. But I'm going to try to do some work here. So like I said, I'm going to draft. Uh, I started drafting these. Uh, I got these Enchantica, I believe that's how you say it, uh, figurines. They're fantasy figurines from a yard sale the other day. And uh, looking up the comps right now, I'm going to show you the figurines. I only have, I have, let's see, one, two, four, I have five. Um, and these are the, just a couple that I have out here. Got a dragon, dwarf, there's two dwarfs, or I'm sorry, three dwarfs and two dragons there. They're really neat figurines. Now, the dwarves are vintage. They are from the 80s and the late 80s and the two dragons are from the 90s. So <clears throat> you can see right here, I've been researching one of them and the comps on him now, <clears throat> even though most of these are listed for about $20 a piece, uh, some of them even higher if I just search for just this brand. You can see that some of these figurines actually go for quite a bit there. That's $499 somebody has that dragon for. Um, another, it looks like an orc, another dragon. So those, those figurines look like they will do well. Um, but when you go over and you filter out and look at the sold listings. Now there have been some that have sold for a decent amount. That one sold for 150. Let's go look at that dragon because he's pretty cool. So just so you know what to be on the lookout if you're out and about and you see these figurines. I don't imagine somebody would really want to get rid of them for quite, quite so little money. But figurines like that should do well. So somebody had sold it for $150 new. Mine are adult owned in great condition. There's no chips or anything on them. Now I, don't, I didn't get lucky and score that figurine or any of the other ones that are higher gold. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to lock them up and see if I can get uh, a little more for them that way and just kind of get them out the door because I don't want them to be a long tail item. Those are items that just kind of stay for a long time and then eventually they'll sell. So I've already got my template going here. Um, I started my <clears throat> draft here as you can see I started with the title. Now you definitely want to uh, when you're viewing your title or writing your title you want to add in some keywords to make it easier for people to find. So throwing in vintage name of the company of course throw it in collectible because you don't know what people are going to really be searching for I threw in fantasy um, and lot so that should be something that's very simple straightforward they'll be able to find my listing uh, with some of those keywords and when you get to the description you want to be as descriptive as possible now there's not much for me to actually uh, put here in the description because these items were very well taken care of. They are in excellent condition. Uh, and then, usually, you want to fill out as much as possible in these item specifics. You can even make your own, like where they were manufactured, what type of um, material you see with those. Um, is it a resin? Is it a porcelain? Is it ceramic? Just 
you want to make sure you give as much details so that way that the, the buyer doesn't have to constantly be messaging you um, to find out specifics on your item. Same thing goes for the item description. In the item description, you want to be as descript descriptive as possible. So here I have my title. I have the condition that I've already listed above as well. And I also put in every single individual one they will be getting, what their title is, what their uh, number uh, that they're connected with is. We do list our return policy. You don't necessarily have to do that part. And you want them to also know that if there is any issues, to message you first. And here, I went ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and try to list it at $64.99, so that's what it's gonna go up for. Uh, you do get the option here if you would like to allow your buyer to make offers. And it will let them know in the listing when they see that, that the buyer is accepting offers. Um, now, I feel that these items are in great quality um, and I might be able to actually get what I'm asking for. So I'm not gonna start off with the offers. I'm gonna wait a little bit and see how that goes. And sorry if it's uh, making you a little bit nauseous here. Next, I'm gonna be adding in shipping. So what I'll be doing is I'll be weighing them out here on this uh, commercial um, scale here. You can see that. It'll, I'll be weighing them out and I'll have to kind of um, overestimate a little bit because I will have to take into consideration that these are going to go into a box because I won't be able to ship these just in a poly mailer. And that's another thing when you are doing a listing, if you find an item that's similar, if you push sell similar, it's going to populate all of the other uh, eBayers information on that item and it might not be the exact one that you have so you want to make sure that you are changing that. Okay guys so I finished my draft um, now I do have to take pictures so I can't actually show you that finished product just yet because that's a whole nother process <laughs> we're working on drafts here but what I can do is show you what the listing will look like for a different item now that it's active. So let's take a look here so you'll see the listing here. Um, so you'll see the pictures, the price, and it'll say buy it now. If it's an auction, it'll say place bid. Um, and if you see here, it says make offer. So on this particular listing, I have set up for offers. So a buyer can send me offers. So you'll see right here, this is what the buyer will see. Good morning, everyone. Uh, we're gonna. We just woke up. It's uh, right around seven o'clock in the morning here in Las Vegas. We're gonna show you what sold. We sold eight total items for right around two hundred dollars gross, and we'll go through them right now. Let you know what we paid for them and what we're expecting to uh, get in return. Okay, so I got the items pulled uh, right here on the table. It's a total of eight again. Start with the first one here. Sold this uh, Barney Campfire sing along. This is, a, this is a good bolo for you guys because this VHS sold for $19.99. That's right, $20 for a VHS. It is sealed. It is something you guys could keep an eye out for when you go thrift, uh, thrift shops. Uh, aside from looking out for sealed VHS, you should also keep an eye out for any, any horror um, VHS, especially if they're sealed. Okay, next item that we got... Um, Oh, again, the VHS we I had twenty-five cents into, I'm making twenty-five dollars. Uh, this Build a Bear outfit right here. I'm sorry, I said Build a Bear. It's Cabbage Patch Kids. Cabbage Patch Kids outfit. Then we pulled this off of a doll, and like we, uh, like my wife had told you in her haul, these individual clothing pieces will sell. I uh, sold for seven ninety-nine uh, plus shipping. All right, next item we got is this. Uh, desktop light box. Uh, picked this up at the bins. We asked for a price. I believe they uh, told us $1.99. We sold this for $16.99 plus shipping. We tested it, uh, plugged it in and everything. You can see right there a Logan desktop light box. Uh, good for multiple things, but uh, what I read that it's mainly used for is to put x-rays and slides over. 
Next item here is a posable blue. He is a plush. Uh, he must have some kind of wiring inside because his ears and legs can be posed in different directions. But uh, yeah, he we picked him up at the bins as well. And he sold for $9.99 plus shipping on top. He barely made anything. Probably, probably cost us a dollar right there. Uh, next item is this stethoscope. You can see right along the edge here that it says Littman Classic. This is a very, very good brand. And this sold almost immediately. We picked it up at the bins in the hall that got cut off that you guys missed a little bit of. Um, we, we picked that one up by the pound at the bins and it cost us probably what, 75 cents, barely weighs anything. And we sold that one for, um, $34.99 plus shipping on top. Uh, next item that sold is this very tiny little key here. I completely forgot what this was too. Give me a second. So it is a 1996 Trend Masters Star Castle Garden Castle Glitter Key for Poly Pocket. Uh, Poly Pocket items are really, really big. These tiny, tiny little pieces can sell $20, $30 each sometimes. Lot them up and you could get a lot of money. So keep an eye out, Poly Pocket. This is a key for one of the play sets, I imagine. Next up, we got this 21 day fix. This is from Beachbody. You always want to keep an eye out for uh, Beachbody stuff like Insanity and P90X and stuff like that. This is just a, a two disc uh, 21 day workout. Uh, discs were put in DVD player and tested. And we paid, what's that, 50 cents for that one. And we ended up selling it for. $24.99 plus shipping on top. Moving on, our last item that sold today is this Cardinals hat. It's a bit of an old school. I think it's uh, 2000s, maybe late, late 90s uh, style. We sold this hat for $9.99 plus shipping. And we picked this one up. This one might have been free. It could have come from the bins, though. And if it did come from the bins, again, 25 cents, maybe. So that's what's sold. We're going to get this all packed up, uh, ready to go. And we'll check back in with you later. We might be doing a video or two today explaining uh, some drafting, some posting, uh, and how we go about just uh, evaluating and appraising our items. All right, guys, we are leaving the house right now. Uh, we're going to go drop off the packages. Everything's packaged up. It's a little bit after 9 o'clock. Uh, this is right when the post office opens for us. Uh, we'll check back in with you here in a little bit. And there he goes. He's dropping off the packages here at our local mini mart. And then we're going to be heading over to Walgreens because we do have a FedEx package. And then we're going to also maybe take you guys with us on a little shopping excursion. We're trying to find something specific we're making um, this Thai dish and we couldn't find all of the ingredients at our local store so time to hit up the international market okay so we're here at Walgreens dropping off the FedEx package and I know some of you guys might be wondering what package we actually needed to drop off at FedEx because they were all kind of small uh, the light box we listed with the option of FedEx and for whatever reason the buyer selected that and it wasn't the cheapest option, but it was the fastest option. FedEx was gonna deliver this by the 19th, and all USPS options, including priority, were two days later than that. So we, whenever uh, the buyer selects a faster form of shipment, uh, whether it's more expensive or not, we tend to adhere to their request. But if we can save the money and get them a faster form of shipment or equal uh, time shipment, and uh, we will contact them and let them know what kind of savings we gave them and refund them a portion of that so yeah we uh, just uh, want to let you know about it all right guys so <laughs> we're supposed to be heading to the international market however like most resellers 
with our huge death pile at home, we decided to pop into Goodwill. <laughs> so we'll see if there's anything here and um, hopefully there is, so we'll see. So I'm here in Goodwill. Uh, when I come into Goodwill, I like to go down one of two aisles, either stationary or sporting goods. And I'll take a look and see um, in stationary if there's any ink. Like right here, uh, that's a, it's a bit crazy. This is why we don't go thrifting very often. Six six dollars is not going to make us a lot of profit there. But yeah, you want to you want to pass by the stationery or sporting goods um, on our on your way to media and electronics, as those are our main sources. So I'm here in sporting goods. There's there's not a lot here. Uh, a lot of balls. These teddy bears that are six dollars each. Not a lot of money to be made there. There's this glove here for only two dollars. I'll pick that up. Uh, take a look at it here in a minute because it, it looks like it's in decent condition. But yeah, we're checking out sporting goods and we'll move on. So I'm over here uh, with the golf clubs. They have quite a few out. Uh, there are a few names I'm looking for, uh, specifically Taylor Made, uh, Titleist. Um, a lot of these are going to be pretty much garbage, but there are going to be some here that I could pick through. Let me show you. I've already found one tailor-made. I don't think it's worth that much. But uh, I'll pick through this and I'll show you guys later. Alright, so I'm here in the electronics. Uh, taking a look at remotes and uh, electronics like DVD players, VHS, combos. Taking a look up here, you see some headsets and controllers. See what I can find. The only item that we did pick up, I'll show you right here. Should make us about 20 bucks, pay for the whole deal because we did pick up a couple personal items. Yeah, the Game of Thrones, uh, Song of Ice and Fire, at least uh, five books that are released right now. Who knows when uh, winter is actually coming. Okay, we're here at one of the many international markets that we have in Las Vegas. You can see over my shoulder, this is called Marketplace. Uh, we come here for a lot of the items that we can't find at your normal uh, supermarket. And we're looking for a special kind of chili and a special kind of lettuce. So we're hoping to find it here. So I know this isn't part of a resale trip. We're just letting you know what's going on. We dropped off our packages. We did some sourcing today. We're gonna go home and draft, cook, eat, and relax. Uh, take it easy for the rest of the day. Hey guys, we just wanted to show you what we're looking at inside of the international market. Like we don't know what half of this stuff is. Well, I mean, this looks like mochi. Okay, I was wrong, but I mean, just take a look. Just random stuff from all over the world. Yeah, it's really neat here. I uh, picked up this thing from Italy. Looks good. Hey guys, so <laughs> we just finished our shopping trip inside of the international market and as always, we cannot resist temptation. So we didn't find exactly what we were looking for. We were looking for something called lamb's lettuce. Um, they didn't have it and we're gonna have to go with a substitute for that and we still couldn't find the chili that we were looking for either so we had to go with a substitute on that as well so not successful but we did get a bunch of random goodies uh, we got some random Kit Kats so I'll show you what we got here not sure what flavor that is but that's gonna be consumed shortly uh, we also picked up this one here. I'm not sure if that's uh, maybe peach or apple or something else, but we're excited about that as well. Couldn't pass up these uh, tiramisu uh, little cake bite things that he showed you earlier. And we also found a chestnut flavored one here. So we're excited about that. Let's see what else we picked up. I picked up some white coffee. It's supposed to be low acidic, so I'm gonna try that out because I haven't tried that yet. And I do like my coffee as I stated. And we also got some high chews. We usually pick up high chews because we enjoy them, but this is a yogurt mix, so we haven't tried that one yet. Uh, so that's it for some of the snacks. Give me just a second here. Let me see what else we got. <clears throat> We picked up some just red chilies. 
And these right here, every time we go to ramen, we end up getting one of these. And it's a melon creamy soda. All right, guys, day's work is done. Uh, we're here and food is done too. So we wanted to show you what our whole day ended up uh, giving us. <laughs> yeah, what we were looking <laughs> for those items for. So here it is. This is what we'll be eating tonight. A cashew Thai chicken. Uh, I hope I did all right. <laughs> Hope it's not too spicy, but either way, we're ready to eat. So you guys have a good evening. All right, we'll talk to you guys later. Uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell, and like the video if uh, we helped you out today. <laughs>